Happy New Year, Happy New Week, and Happy New Vlog Colour Scheme. Welcome to another episode of Trophy Stupid Vlog. It's a new year, so I thought I'd change it up a bit because, you know, got to keep fresh. Anyway, we're back to a much more relaxed vlogging style, which means that I didn't need to get up very early or start vlogging very early, and they'll probably be the only clip for today. Um, because largely it's terrible outside, but uh, what can you do? Um, the best of 2014 video. That is what you can do. You can watch that because, as you can see, it is right here. Um, if you click that, it'll take you to it. It is only 2 minutes 14 seconds, so I think you might be able to spare the time in your hectic week. And it is my year in that time, so it's a one clip from every vlog. Um, there were 77 vlogs last, last year. It's a nice summary of what this nonsense is all about. I hope you enjoy it. The only other piece of any other business um, is to say welcome if you've just stumbled across this nonsense or if you've come across my vlogs because of a uh, link in Steve's video for his um, gu travel guide to Wells. So hi, um, this is me, my name's Toby and this is my um, somewhat uh, pedestrian life. <laughs> um, you join me on the least active day um, of the last three weeks. I was going through three weeks, probably three months. Um, it'll get better from here. You just have to have faith. Um, that 2014 video will give you some idea of what kind of things go on on this channel. So thanks. Thanks for even clicking. Um, I hope you actually enjoy this and you'll subscribe. It's finally stopped raining for the first time today, now that it's gone five o'clock. <laughs> Not been a hugely productive day other than the uh, videos. Um, but, you know, that's an achievement in itself. Uh, Crystal spent all day at the hairdresser's. She literally left before, almost before the sun came up this morning and got back when <laughs> the sun went down. But that hairdresser's, there's a, there's a documentary to be made on that place anyway. So <laughs> I'm going to get some food. Christmas is finally being packed up into boxes. Um, that minion needs to be defestivized. <laughs> um, so does the small cow up there. Every year this car gets worse and worse. First it lost its engine, then it lost its doors. Now it seems to have had a severe front end collision with a tree. <laughs> it's lost the windscreen. But it's still going. We're going to go for a little walk now that we've done lots and lots of tidying. Here in uh, Mortlake you can see the blossom has already come out on the 4th of January, so that's good. We're just carrying on our little walk towards Barnes. Good morning. It's a Monday morning. Okay, it is a Monday. Um, it's not a morning. It's not actually close. It's gone one. Um, I got up quite late today. The reason being is that I was up pretty late last night finishing the best of 2014 video, which went live this morning and I'm incredibly happy with. Possibly happier than I am with anything else on this channel. Um, yeah, definitely happier than with anything else on this channel. It's taken most time and most effort. Um, it's very simple, actually, when you look at it, but it's just getting the music right, took a bit of time, um, liaising with my uh, acoustic composer and um, picking the right clips and just the formatting. Um, but, but I'm very happy with it. So if you haven't seen it, um, I know I've talked about it once already, but this is, you know, I'm going to keep banging on about it because I'm quite proud of it. Here it is. So feel free to click and have a view. It's only 2 minutes 14 seconds, that's the whole point. Um, and it gives you a good summary of last year. So it's a new year and it's officially the first day of the working week of the new year. And this is the time of year people usually go about making resolutions. Um, personally, I'm not a fan of resolutions. Why arbitrarily decide to do them at Jan in January? Like the start of the year is a pretty arbitrary marker anyway. Uh, secondly, um, a lot of people set themselves up for failure because if you say something like, I'm going to go to the gym three times a week and then week one you go twice or, or not at all, you've already failed. There we go. You, and, and it, you know, what, what have you achieved? I know the reason a lot of people like them is because they're measurable goals. Um, and I get that, but I think you should have um, more frequent goals than yearly resolutions. And they should be measurable, but they shouldn't be so absolute. Um, what if you wanted to go to the gym more than three times a week? So you should set yourself directions of travel, is my feeling, and you should do it on a weekly basis and you should measure yourself because I'm not convinced that anyone's going to hold you to your resolutions. Um, so 
This year, I have some directions of travel that I would like to go in. Uh, first and foremost is to earn more than last year. I always set that as a goal. It's pretty straightforward. Other things I want to do, um, there's a lot of stuff I want to do in the flat. What else? I want to see my friends more than I have done up to this point. Now, I realise that that kind of, it's a work-life balance thing, but there's some people who I consider friends who I didn't see at all in the last 12 months, and that's pretty poor. Um, pretty poor on my part, certainly. So I'm going to improve that, um, and I'm going to start improving that today. Um, and the more I see them, the better, frankly. Uh, and I want to do more with YouTube, because I feel like this has been a hobby for five years, um, very nearly five years, and it's been fun, but I want to do more with it. Secondarily, I want to become a drone pilot. That sounds a bit bizarre and wonderful, but in the world of videography, you need a specialisation. That's the direction I'd like to go in, which is why I've got a small drone. I'm going to start and work my way up. Um, and I have some personal goals. I'm not necessarily going to share all of those with you. Um, so that's kind of a broad overview of what, I, of what I'm sort of planning. And this is a week-to-week -week thing. So they will change and they will evolve depending on my personal circumstances. Um, and, you know, it's just an ongoing process. This isn't special because it's January. This is something that actually happens all the time. Plus, there are also some things that I want to continue to do that I've been doing up to now, like having a meat-free day a week and vlogging at least once a week. And continuing to walk as often as possible, trying to lower my carbon footprint wherever I can do, those kind of things. So, If I only film one thing today, I think it's only fair that it's this sunset because it's looking pretty impressive at the moment. I've just been re-watching some of my old vlogs. Yes, I do actually watch my own vlogs. Um, specifically the one about um, when we went to Paris last, because as I said, we've booked a trip to Paris in March. I thought I'd remind myself of where we went and what we did and what have you, so that's interesting. And then it's just, in the same week, um, I talk a bit about um, the bosses of my former company, which is fascinating. Suffice to say, watching it, I'm very glad I don't work there anymore. <laughs> uh, so there we go. One hilarious side note. I noticed that in that video, instantly, if you want to go back, to, back and watch it, it's called Midnight in Paris, and it's from late 2012. Uh, in it, I was trying to make an assessment of, of the uh, three directors of the company and I was reasonably tactful about Ashley. He said I didn't really know much about Stephen, but I didn't trust him uh, because he's a he's a hack. And um, I said about Richard that um, I felt that he, he wasn't doing a sufficiently good job of allaying the fears of his employees and that if he carried on in his existing manners and ways then he'd lose a large number of people. Interestingly, 18 months after that video was made, five senior members of uh, Hart's team resigned. <laughs> All within about three months of each other. So um, am I a prophetic genius? Possibly. Was I one of them? Yes. So did I possibly know that was going to happen anyway? Maybe. He's still there. Problem still exists. Since then, a lot more people have left, not just us five. Um, I've thought about this before, but broadly speaking, there's only sort of two um, long-time friends um, who are still at heart uh, of all the people that I was uh, close to then. So that's quite alarming. Or it would be if I was running that company that so many, the t turnover had been so great in such a short period of time. So back to Paris. Um, if you've never been or you're interested, then can I suggest that you watch uh, this video from Steve? It's all lies, but it might help. Uh, if you have been, then I am interested in any suggestions that are not really, really obvious, because I've been to all of those. Um, please leave them in the comments below. Yeah. Why am I so excited, you might ask? Well, the answer is because I've just submitted my tax return. This little tax return dance. <laughs> oh, such a chore. You know all those adverts they have that say tax shouldn't be taxing. Well, in that case, you should make the tax return a bit simpler, shouldn't you? Because it's a complete pain in the arse. And I have a, I've got quite a simple return, um, all things considered. So I, God help people with more complex ones. Um, what a complete farce our tax system is. Like, the you know the brackets for national insurance aren't the same as the brackets for income tax. The income tax brackets are constantly moving and, you know, there's no real understanding. If, if somebody says to you, I earn £35,000, there's no easy way for you to know how much tax is due on that. Because, you know, there's the tax-free bit, then there's the 
twenty percent bit, and then you know if you own forty five, say, then there's the forty percent bit. There's no mental calculation you can do. So it's keeping accountants in business, basically. Damn you, accountants! So in less happy news, today was the day that uh, the French uh, magazine uh, was attacked and uh, twelve people were killed by gunmen. Um, French authorities are calling it terrorism. A lot of people are calling it terrorism, but it's murder. I mean, that's what it is. Terrorism is a horrible word that's used for political means, largely. Um, but let's call it what it is. It's murder. Um, and this has obviously sparked somewhat of a controversy around people trying to defend press freedoms, which I'm fully for. I believe you need a free press. It doesn't mean the press is above the law. I, be, I'm, I have to be honest, I, I, don't, I don't trust media as a whole, having worked in it. Um, I don't believe you get fair, balanced views from any particular outlet. And I do believe that it needs better regulation. That said, you should still have a press that is free to print things that fall within the law. And in France, it's been doing that. Um, but some people dislike that and uh, decided to take action with violence, which is, of course is absurd. Uh, and disgusting and horrific, frankly. Um, I don't really know what to think beyond, you know, these things can happen. Um, you're never free from, from this kind of activity and you can never can be. There's no, there's not, there's not a magic solution to these kind of problems. I know all the politicians say, oh, if you did this or if you did that, it can't, you can't be, can't be avoided. Uh, murder is something you've never been able to avoid. There's always people with extreme views will try and take you down. And everyone's saying, talking about def the idea of defending press freedoms in France. But France is not a particularly free country in the Western world as I see it. Um, so yes, they definitely need to be defended. Magazines uh, like this one are one of the few bastions of freedom in France. France is a country, don't forget, where it is illegal to display certain symbols um, in public. Um, things you know you might you might agree with this but things like the swastika are illegal to display it's not that Nazism is illegal it's illegal to display a symbol that's what I find absurd it's illegal to display symbols to do with drug paraphernalia for example also it's also a country where it's illegal to wear a hijab so it's a complex issue definitely France is not the last bastion, bastion of um, press freedom by any stretch of the imagination um, that doesn't make what just happened any less terrible. Um, but it also doesn't mean that this is an argument for why you should have a completely unfettered press that is free to publish anything they like, um, regardless of factual accuracy, which is where the problem lies in this country in particular. And killing journalists is not a solution to anything, frankly. Unless, of course, you're a small-minded prick um, who thinks somehow that blasphemy is worse than murder, in which case you are frankly beyond contempt. So I'm finally venturing out the house because this is the first moment this week where it's, the weather is frankly too good to be indoors. It's been pretty crap for three days in a row and now the sun's come out. It's very low but that's um, not a lot, a lot I can do about that. But uh, it's quite warm and we're going to pop into queue. So I've just started watching season three of the newsroom and I realise that's quite late, but I usually wait till the season's concluded before I start watching it, so I get to pick the pace at which I see it. And it's Aaron Sorkin, so I know that a lot of people won't like it. Um, and a lot of people will. Uh, but I, I know the reason that people don't like it, and in fact it's the same reason that I do. I will explain. You see, in every single Aaron Sorkin world, everyone is super smart, very, very well spoken, and super confident. And some people see that as a sort of unrealistic bravado. And they don't like to see that. They don't like to watch it. Fair enough. But you see, to me, the two things that are most lacking in the real world, in the fields that he writes about, politics and media, are A, confidence, and B, intelligence. Um, the people who have A often lack B. And the people who have B often lack A. So when I watch Aaron Sorkin, I see a realistic environment with unrealistic people. Um, and I like those unrealistic people because they're the people I would choose to have if I could have a pick of people working in that environment. My experience of media is that it's, it's led by the stupid. Um, 
and uh, it, it employs the um, uncourageous. The intelligence pool is at the bottom of the organisation and the confidence pool is at the top. Um, and that is the wrong way around. You need a bit of both, definitely, but you want the smart people running the company. Um, and a lot of people say they don't trust bankers and what have you, that's kind of the go-to. I don't trust bankers and politicians. Yeah, 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 maybe. But they're both predictable, I believe, bankers and politicians. The media is not, and that's where it's very dangerous. There is a problem in media and newspapers and TV news in particular. Um, and the problem isn't a lack of free speech. It's a problem of good governance, people making intelligent decisions, people being focused on the truth. Um, they're not, because the news is an entertainment medium, largely, and the truth goes by the way when you want a good story. So if you're going to trust someone, trust the predictable people. Trust them to be themselves. They won't do what you want them to, but trust them to act in their normal nature. Don't trust the media, because it will turn on a whim. Anyway, that's just my experience of having worked in the industry. Um, don't let me put you off. <laughs> Make your own judgement. Anyway, it's far too beautiful here to be worrying about that. So nice to have these really sunny days in January. Especially like today. The sun's a bit low. You know, I'd like it to be light till 8.30, but, you know, <laughs> I guess I'll just have to take 4.15. Oh, well, this is good. <laughs> I decided to do one complete lap of queue around the perimeter. As you can see, it's developed new lakes, which kind of makes it a bit more challenging. Anyhow, I will still get round. I'm not convinced necessarily that I've put across my argument particularly well this week. Um, um, or that I've necessarily convinced you um, of my point of view. But to summarise, um, murder bad, freedom of press good, media amoral. I think that's pretty much it. There is a goose on top of this tree. Have you... Um, <laughs> yep, definitely a goose on top of a tree. Right, I think that's probably a good way to summarise it. <laughs> There's a goose on a tree. It's another beautiful day and I do hope I'm not tempting fate, seeing as it's only, you know, just coming into the second week of Jan, but... Crocuses and daffodils are already broken ground. Some of them will be out, some of the daffodils in queue will probably be out in a week, as long as it stays this kind of temperature, which I'm hoping it does. This is perfectly pleasant. Actually, today is ridiculously warm, <laughs> not just perfectly pleasant. Highs of 14. I'm going for a little walk around to Richmond along the towpath, make the most of the nice weather this morning. Using the power of iMovie, I'm going to make the name of this shop infinitely better. How's that? So the terrible events in Paris have finally come to a conclusion with um, more hostages uh, taken and uh, unfortunately it appears but four lost their lives and also all of the gunmen are also dead. Um, which is pretty much the worst possible conclusion to this event, i.e. more death. Um, there can't be many people who are satisfied with that. The death of the gunman means, of course, you can't find out any more information about where they trained and all that kind of stuff. But, the, you know, this is it's going to go on for a while. My biggest problem I have with it is media coverage. The media covers it and then says that the media coverage is a bad thing, but carries on doing it. It then spends hours talking about hypotheticals and, you know, what was do you think so-and-so was thinking and what will be the sort of heart-searching that goes on from this? All crap! I mean, it does not help. In fact, if anything, it makes it worse. It helps create a climate of fear, which just makes, drives people apart, which is where these events ultimately come from. So I, I tip my hat to the, the French police who did a very difficult job and who lost uh, several people in the process. I tip my hat to the people of Paris who've endured a pretty horrible um, ordeal over the last three days or so. 
And um, frankly, the news outlets should all be ashamed of themselves. Yet again, they fail to cover themselves in glory with more hyperbolic and hypothetical crap that has frankly made people's lives worse. So shame on them. So apologies if this week's been a bit ranty. I've just been slightly frustrated by what I've been seeing and reading. Uh, maybe my best bet would be to actually not ingest mainstream media because it's highly divisive and depressing. Um, I think what I'm going to do in the future is instead of ranting, I'm just going to create an idiot board. And at the end of the video, I'm just going to put up a list of this week's idiots. Um, that way it'll get it off my chest without you having to ingest this nonsense. Uh, but I thank you for watching nonetheless. I'm aware that this week is very long. I'm getting out of the habit of doing week uh, dailies and back into weeklies and I'm going to have to trim it down a bit. Um, I do hope you'll subscribe. Next week, I promise, will be 100% rant free. That is a guarantee. And I will see you then. Good night.